Welcome back to another GGF video. And today I'll be taking a look at the latest motherboards from NZXT. So we have four here, two of each, two from AMD, two from Intel, and that's on the latest X870E and the latest Intel Z890. So one thing I like about these boards are the two color options, the white and the black, is exactly the same model. Now, a lot of other brands, I think every other brand, if you wanna go with a white aesthetic board, it's going to be a different model or a different variation to their black counterparts. You don't really get the same of the aesthetics, the same hardware on the board, but these ones, there's simply two models, uh, one black, one white. So when you check out, you choose whether you want the black board or you want the white board. So we have two black Intel AMD, two white Intel AMD. I'm going to probably focus on, let's just get a quick look at the black aesthetic on them and then we will probably go or I will go over the actual white ones when I go over all the specs because it just makes it a little bit easier to see the boards when they are white. Now I'm really digging these aesthetics on these. The black is a very nice deep matte black. Just looks super nice. This one here is the Intel. As you can see, socket there. And then I can't really, oh, I probably can get this in frame. This one over here is the AMD. Now, once again, a lot of people do say, why do Intel boards look better? I'm not sure why. And I think that still goes with these NZXT boards. Intel here, I think this one just looks that little bit nicer. I will try and get a shot of the RGB. I tried throwing in a power supply. The RGB did not start. So it looks like it needs a CPU to actually get that RGB going. But on the Intel, the RGB flows around here, across here, and then this whole area is RGB. Then on the AMD, which is this one, it's simply just this bit here from what I can see. So definitely not as much RGB. This cover on the right side, that covers not really much. It's just a nice aesthetic piece. On the Intel, it's kind of uh, translucent, semi-transparent. It just gives you that really cool effect. Whereas on the black, it is just solid. Now, both of these boards do have the diagnostic or debug LED. Actually, it's not. It's just on the AMD, which is this one here. So that one's got the debug LED, the white one over here, that's got it. But the Intel doesn't seem to have that, which is interesting. Uh, both boards have power connectors. The uh, Intel's down the bottom, AMD's up here. I've always preferred them to be up the top around here because down the bottom, they're sometimes just a little bit harder to get to. Around the back, uh, none of these boards have back plates. Now, these boards, I wouldn't say they're super, super expensive. All of these uh, four boards are $499 US dollars. Now, you might think that's a lot. I think um, in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to motherboards, I think that's kind of middle of the ballpark. It's not super cheap. It's not super expensive. Like, geez, there's boards over $1,000. So I think $500 is kind of right in the middle. On the white boards, you do get this interesting gray back and then you get this white border around the edge. It doesn't really matter, matter it doesn't mean anything. It just looks a little bit nicer, a little bit different. Now let's move these black boards out of the way so we can focus on the white ones. Now that we've seen them, I think that's really it on the black ones. Uh, really nice matte black, which I do like and then I'll just take all of this peel off. There is quite a bit of peel. Now, you know me, I really do like my white builds. I do have a couple of builds coming up. I've got one coming up soon where I will most likely use, I think I will use the Intel because the board just looks that little bit nicer. And some other features, let's get these side by side so we can get these in the frame. There's a little sticker over the NZXT on the front. Now, when it comes to who makes these boards, I'm pretty sure it is ASRock. I know ECS used to make some old ones for NZXT. Pretty sure these are ASRock, mainly due to just some of the naming uh, schemes in the manual. They mentioned the M.2 was the blazing M.2, the hyper M.2, ASRock have always done that. And the packaging looks dead on exactly the same as what ASRock uh, are doing with their boards for the packaging. Um, so I mentioned the RGB, try and get a shot on that. Same with the white one, runs around here, flows along here. I can definitely see this will be RGB because when I undo this M.2 heatsink, there are some pogo pins under there that gives you contact for that uh, 
RGB, some special features dedicated towards NZXT. They have these really weird 8-pin connectors. They're kind of beefy. They kind of do stand out a bit and look a bit weird. There's one at the top of each one, one down the bottom. This is for NZXT devices, like their core fans. That's their stack of fans. You can get like two or the three fans that are in the huge stack. So they do that and that will allow a single connection. So if you have three fans at the top of your case, one plug plugs into there, that'll do the fan, you can control it. That'll do the RGB, you can control it and that's done. And then same with the bottom as well. So pretty nice feature for that. Now in terms of power delivery, let's actually switch this around because um, I got some information just to read off so I don't get anything incorrect. I'll put the Intel on this side, the AMD on this side because I've listed the Intel first. Power delivery for the Intel is a 20 phase plus one plus one. For the AMD, it's 20 plus two plus one. So you're getting decent uh, decent power out of the board, not the highest I've seen. Like this thing is like the ASRock Aqua, which is like, I think 28. So I think the Godlike has 30, but then again, boards go all the way down to 16 and 14. So it's definitely in the middle of the ballpark. Now VRM cooling is interesting on both of these. On the Intel, you get this really nice fin stack. I've always liked uh, VRM cooling that has this fin stack array. Um, one, it does cool better than just a solid block of aluminum. And then it just looks that a little bit nicer as well. You can see all the fins in there. But interesting enough, the AMD doesn't have a fin stack. It may kind of look like it, but it's not. It's just a block of aluminum that has some fins sort of seen seed out of it, which makes it look that little bit different. Now, extra cooling. There are fans on both of these boards inside the IO area. There's two, probably like 40 mil fans. I'll see if we can get a shot right inside there. Over here, there is a 40 mil fan there, and then probably one over in this area here. So one there, one there. That's just to provide extra cooling. No doubt, I think this one will cool better, only because of that bin stack array when these fans go either which way they're going. You can see on this one, all the holes there. Whether they're going this way or that way, the fin stack will cool better, whereas this one, it doesn't go straight through. So the fans are just gonna hit that and then either go along one side. And you can see how they've done that is they've got a channel in there so the fans will either draw or push air through that. Whereas on the Intel with the fin stack, they definitely did not need to put that channel in there because it'll just go straight through those fins. Memory, don't need to talk too much about that. Four DIMMs up to 192 gigs. I know some boards uh, were mentioning 256, but they've mentioned 192 and up to 8,000 mega transfers plus OC. One interesting area I want to touch base is with the slots on these boards. It's a little bit weird when I mean slots, talk about the PCIe configuration. So the first 16 by slot is obviously a Gen 5. This one is dedicated by 16 Gen 5. It will never drop down to eight. This is going by the manual, going by their specs. It'll never drop down to say eight if you're using a couple of M.2s or the bottom slot. Now on the bottom slot on both of these boards, um, are severely compromised. Now, I'm not sure why they did that. I think their main focus was on the primary slot. On the Intel, the secondary slot is a PCIe Gen 4, and it says it runs it by two. I'm not sure if that's right. I've never seen a slot run it by two. To me, it looks like it runs it by four. That could just be a typo in the manual and the specs. It looks like a Gen 4, because I don't really know what cards are Gen 2. A lot of 4K, like Elgato capture cards are, are, are by four. So definitely you're gonna to wanna to buy four for that one. And then same on the AMD, it's actually a PCI Gen 3, which is still fine for, for lowering cards, like a capture card or a USB card or a sound card. And that also said it, says it runs at buy two. And going inside here, it looks like that is definitely gonna be a buy four. So I might try and follow up with that, put something in the description just to see if that's uh, buy four on both of these slots, because that definitely does make sense. Um, it seems weird that making it uh, a buy two slot, which is something I've never seen before. M.2s on these, very similar on both, but there is a little bit uh, a difference on the AMD. This just pops off, it is nice, pretty neat. You've got the one, two, three pads there. This one here, you just pull, kind of like pulling off a case side panel, that just pops off like that. And the Intel, you have an extra one on there. Now, the AMD has the like EZ release, quick release, whatever the brands call it. So you just pop your drive in and out they pop. The Intel is using the old school, traditional, what's this, like an M2 screw. Very old school. I don't think we've had this for a very long time. So they're using that. So you've got one, two, 
three, four on the Intel for your mainly your secondary ones, and then you have three on the AMD. Now, if I get my screwdriver on the Intel, so on the Intel, these four are running at Gen four and this top one here is running at Gen 5. Now, for whether they're running off CPU or chipset, the Intel has obviously the primary Gen 5 is running off the CPU. There's another Gen 4 that is running off the CPU. Then the remaining three are running off the chipset. And then for the AMD, just this primary, primary, if I can say that right, just the primary Gen 5 is running off the CPU. Then these remaining three are running of the chipset, but it's interesting that they've got those quick release on these ones and not on the Intel. Uh, both boards have four SATA 6 key ports. There's four there, one, two, three, four. They kind of stack on top of each other like so. You can see those four. And then moving down to LAN, nothing too crazy spectacular. They both feature a uh, five gigabit LAN, as you can see there just one they're not running two like a, a 10 or a 5 or a 5 and a 2.5 nothing like that just your standard five uh for the wireless both feature wi-fi 7 but only the intel features the newer 320 megahertz channel bandwidth so you will get a little bit more throughput out of that one the amd simply just features the i wouldn't say it's older but the more sort of current and established one uh 160 megahertz channel bandwidth for the wi-fi rear io i'll see if i can actually i might focus on the intel first now to me definitely i think the intel uh hands down has better io you are getting the two thunderbolt four one there one there no thunderbolt five not many boards are doing that you're getting the one usb 40 you're also getting six usb 10 gig type a three usb 5 gig type a and you've got your display output there just one hdmi so that's the uh intel there more usb and definitely more for the usb type c then your wi-fi antenna you got your clear cmos and your bios flashback once again looks very much as rocky to me moving on to the amd we are still getting your two usb 40 which is here but there's no thunderbolt on this one so if you're looking for thunderbolt on an amd board this might not be the board for you it does have five usb uh, 10 gig and three usb 5 gig both of those type a so between the Intel and AMD, the Intel, you're getting an extra USB 10 and you still got the same amount of five, but on the Intel, you're getting that two Thunderbolt 4 and the USB 40. Instead on the AMD, you're just getting the two USB 40. So I wouldn't say it's a huge difference, but definitely the Intel has the few extra ports. Another interesting thing on the AMD, there's actually no other dedicated display outputs, like there's no HDMI there's no display port it's that's if that's something you uh, definitely need but in saying that on the amd you can also use the usb 40 to do display output uh if you need you might just need to get an adapter or something like that if you don't have the uh right connection but yeah i think that's pretty much it on these boards i didn't want to sort of go on and on and on with this i just wanted to do a quick uh quick look on these i haven't really tested these haven't even fired them up I literally just opened these up before and you can see now on that uh, on that Intel board, there are those little uh, pogo pins there that I can see that the RGB would run. Once you drop that in, the RGB would run up along this uh, M.2 cover and then run along and then continue all the way along there. And then on the AMD, it seems like they didn't go with that same, um, didn't go with that same aesthetic. Some people might like that. They might not like too much RGB all over the board, but you can always turn it off um, and then this one will just drop down like that and yeah it doesn't have those logo pins that drop in but yeah I've got a build coming up very soon with I'm probably going to use the Intel I'm going to probably do some customizing I think I'm going to paint this whole area here I might paint the fin stack because I am going with a bit of a different theme a different look on this one but yeah I think that's it I might just get another shot of the black board in here so you can just see I actually might move this one so you can get a look at the two uh these are the two intel ones here but yeah personally i do think the intel board looks better than the amd that's just my thought you guys might think the amd one does look better yourselves but that is probably just me but anyway i do want to thank uh nzxt for sending these out for me to use in builds i haven't used 
an NZXT board for a very long time. I think it might have been Z390, might have been the last time. So it's going to be good to get this fired up, see how the RGB looks, do some customization and get some in some actual builds. But yeah, once again, $4.99, you can get these all off Amazon. And when you check out, you can choose the one model. You can choose either black or white, depending on your build. But anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.